seeing a long list of VST plugins on the internet, top 10 VSTs that you need, the best 20 plugins of all time, and a lot of similar content like this really got me thinking. What if I could make my own plugin? And there is indeed ways to make VST plugins now, and some tools are pretty easy to use, like Rumpler for example. Or you can make plugins using Patcher in FL Studio. But I wanted to have a bit more flexibility, so I went to the only guru I know to ask about VST plugin creation. Yeah, so it's a lot to unpack here, but it can be broken down into several simple steps. First, decide what you want to build. Second, choose a programming language and the framework to build a plugin with. Third, set up the development environment, like downloading Visual Studio and VST SDK. Fourth, make a plugin. And fifth, use it. Something along these lines. Okay, obviously part about making a plugin is much more complex, but I'll go into details along the way. And especially for the beginning, choosing what exact plugin to build is too ambitious, so I just wanted to build something. And for building plugins, the most popular and versatile option was using Juice. So what is Juice? It's a framework for audio application and plugin development, which is open source and can build cross-platform software. But what is a framework? To put it simply, it's like a ready set of tools to make whatever you want. Instead of finding each tool yourself and checking its compatibility with other tools, you already have a clear path to take, which will save you time and efforts to build something you want. But there is a problem. Making plugin in Juice requires C++ programming knowledge. And if you know anything about programming, C++ is considered a pretty hard language to learn. And for me, only knowing JavaScript a bit, it looked like almost impossible task that would take months of time and learning. Even though I watched and even repeated Raphael Gaines' slider tutorial, in process I truly realized that I needed something more accessible and simpler. So I found Heiss. And let me tell you, for me, it became a perfect tool for plugin making. Before you say it's an ad, it's not. I just found this tool and I really enjoyed it. First of all, Heiss is also an open source project and it's a toolkit built on the base of Juice which I talked about previously. This toolkit is really easy to navigate and understand what connects to what, how it works, but if you want to dive deeper into understanding this tool better, there is an awesome tutorial overview by David Healy, who is very active on Heise's forum and helps out a lot of new users. I will leave a link to his channel and I highly suggest checking it out. So let's get to actually doing stuff. So depending on your system at first, you should first install Heise and Juice correctly in order for plugin to compile correctly without any errors. On Windows it was a bit of pain, but looking through forums and watching this video solved the case. And so the development environment was prepared. As you open your Heist application, now you will see this. An interface designer window, module tree on the left, and property editor on the right. Clicking on the interface designer will change it to code editor, which uses a specific language similar to JavaScript and adds that flexibility in development, which I talked about. But you can build something even without writing code, so that's what I decided to go for at first. I got the idea that it would be fun to build some kind of an FX plugin, like reverb or a delay or reverb plus delay together. And for that purposes, Heist has a special script node workspace, which is similar to node spaces and Blender or Unreal Engine if you've seen something like this. These nodes let you build your own DSP algorithm. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing, and basically it's the way your computer processes signal and turns it into sound that you then hear in your DAW. It's especially important for effects plugins, because a unique DSP algorithm equals unique sound and unique effects, which makes your plugin so, so special. I decided to build this super basic reverb delay slash down sampling node script. At first it might look intense, but let me break it down for you, because in its core it's really, really easy. Clicking at the empty field will bring this menu up, where you can choose which node to start from. And you will always start with the container nodes, which act kinda like grouping blocks, which will contain other nodes and other blocks. For example, we will add a chain block and add a split block inside of it. Split block will contain several chain blocks. At first, let's build a dry wet algorithm. In the outer chain block, we will put a mod chain container, and inside, let's put an X fader node. It will act like a fader between two split chains below. The left chain will only have a gain knob, and the right split block will have two parallel chains. Both have gain modules below. All the effects we will put later in these two chains above before gain modules. Let's add a reverb module into this chain. Now you can connect fader first and second routes to the gain knobs, like this. Basically turning this knob will fade in and out between these two channels that we connected here. To make it easier to understand, you can add a waveform generator on the left here and open up this keyboard on the top right. This will let you check your effect on the waveform generator in real time. As you can hear, turning knob all the way to the left will play just a normal and altered sound, but turning it to the right will play the reverb that we have here. 
Now let's add a delay into the mix to this right chain. First of all, in order to build a delay that we are used to, we will need two routing modules, receive and send. We will find them here. Basically, this works as a loop that repeats the delay node signal until it finally fades out. So we will put the delay node between these two. And finally, just to add something weird to the plugin processing, I decided to add a down sampling node in here, which will specifically influence the reverb sound, which sounded pretty interesting when I tried it out. Now we need to route all the necessary nodes in the script to this upper panel that we open up right here, just basically creating different knobs that we can name after what they do, so it will be easier to navigate around them. So for example here I route the dry-wet knob to this knob down here, because this is what it controls. So I routed out dry-wet control, all the reverb-related controls, all the delay-related controls, and the downsampling control. All these knobs will show up in the property tab, I'll show you that later. Now on the module tree press this arrow button to go back to the interface window, and we can start creating the UI for the plugin. Toggle edit right here, right click on the empty space and add a new slider. This slider will be connected to our effects in the properties. Here choose the processor ID, in this case it's script effects one that we created, the parameter for example dry wet knob that we created, and do it to all the other knobs and bam, the functional part of the plugin is done. Before making proper UI and try the VST out in Ableton, And now let's talk design. I wanted to keep it simple, but still wanted to make my own custom look to the plugin. So in the slider option you can choose film strip image for your own knobs, which basically looks like a spreadsheet of frames that will be used to add a custom look and animation to the knob. So I went to Figma and made a knob like this, with simple gradients, shadows and a green dot to mark the knob position. Using 2Path plugin I copied this green dot in a radius and made 25 separate frames with different green dot position. After that I merged these frames into one strip and load it into Heist, and now I had a working custom knob. The same thing happened with background, I didn't go too complex, just added a darker metallic background and these fake speakers on the side, which looked kinda cheesy, but for the first plugin ever, it looks okay. Now all that was left is to compile the entire application, get the final DLL file and put it into VST folder. Crossing fingers, hoping everything will work in Ableton. So, looking at this you might say, you could do all of this by just using standard plugins or actually take much easier routes and make the same thing in Rumpler or Patcher. And my answer to this is yes. But I only touched the tip of an iceberg with the available notes in script note folder, I barely touched coding in Heist, and potential of making something great in here is huge. You can custom build anything you want, and yeah, as I said, it's only the tip of the iceberg. I hope this video gave you an idea what you can make and how to make it, if you ever wanted to make your own audio plugin. Leave in the comments if you want more videos about plugin production and something similar to this, and once again, keep making your own sound, and bye.